Uh, hope you can uh, hear me. Hope you can see me. Good afternoon and welcome to the next Admiral's Trading Spotlight uh, webinar series, uh, where today we're going to talk about, you know, trading tactics for beginners, the seventh part of it, uh, where we're going to talk about candlesticks uh, and one particular setup. Uh, oh, uh, <clears throat> so there's plenty of us to talk about, okay? Lots for us to, to have a look at and to, to share with you. Uh, as always, wherever you are in the world, we appreciate you. We've got a global audience here. You're very welcome. It's fabulous for you to be uh, joining us uh, here. We hope that you're safe and well wherever you may be. Uh, and also, we recognize that we have a wide range of experience who join us for the Admiral Trading Spotlight webinar series uh, from people who are complete beginners to, to very experienced traders. You're all very welcome. There'll all be something for you to take away from today's session uh, if you're joining us here live great to have you here here with us if you're uh, watching this later on the admiral's uh, youtube channel then uh, fabulous great to see you here okay uh, be sure to subscribe to the uh, admiral's youtube channel you can give us a uh, thumbs up if you found this helpful and useful or even a thumbs down we don't mind all feedback is uh, is welcome and talking of feedback, what will happen is at the end of this particular session, uh, you will get sent a, a small feedback form. And we'd really appreciate it if you just take uh, 30 seconds to fill that in, give us uh, some thoughts, opportunity. That if there's something you'd like to see or sort of touch on in the future, then you know, it gives you a chance to let us know because we take on board all of that particular feedback. But today, uh, as I said, strategies for beginners it's a, it's kind of a little bit of a theme of a series that i've been running okay throughout this year just giving very simple setups that new traders in particular could take on board and utilize as i said we're going to talk about candlesticks and in particular we're going to talk about pin bars right or how i would label them as pin bars so uh, why don't we get straight into it ladies and gentlemen and uh, let's uh, let's have a good session so just bear with us a minute and i'll just bring up the slides and we'll crack on to do, do always uh, here we make here we go fantastic so i'm hoping now that uh, not only can you uh, see me uh, and hear me but you can also see the uh, the slide okay so uh, trend strategies for beginners uh, basically part 7 on candlesticks Vincenzo, thanks great to see you here uh, peter hello you're very welcome as i said uh, we have a truly global audience for our sessions and it's fabulous to see you all here today as i said you're all very very welcome um as always it would be great for me to know okay what your own experience has been so you know do you know what candlesticks are do you use them in trading would you know what a pin bar is okay there's no uh, there's no judgment here okay we just want to know where you are because of course i want to be able to pass on and share with you as much uh, help experience and insight as i possibly can during these particular sessions so if you've got experience of using it if you don't then it will be you know something that uh, hopefully will uh, uh, give you some little bit of education is it possible to translate your presentation into romanian um if i spoke romanian uh so i would be delighted to uh, unfortunately i uh, i don't myself but what you'll find is the uh, is the team here at admos they're always putting out content uh, across across uh, various different uh, uh, languages. Uh, I'm sure that um, the uh, the sort of the content team here will take on board that if it's uh, particularly something that is of relevance and use to yourself and uh, other Romanian speakers. But as I said, uh, if you have knowledge of candlesticks, if you know what they are, if you utilize them already, it'd be great to hear what your own experience is. You know, whether it's been helpful for you, whether it's been hindered for you, that's, that's absolutely fine. You know, it's all, it's all part of the, uh, uh, the conversation that we have uh, here and as all well can help every one of us uh, in our own particular uh, trading journey so here we are admirals a, uh, a global uh, global broker a forex and cfd broker with local support licensed and regulated across a wide range of regulatory environments providing competitive spreads on the most popular trading products and allowing the opportunity to engage with markets using both the MT4 and MT5 uh, platform. So if you have any questions about Admirals, please get in touch with your account representative and they'll be very happy to uh, help guide you. Uh, and if you want more timely content from the Admirals content team, then be sure to subscribe to our Telegram channel. Telegram, lots of trading. Uh, um, 
material on there at Admirals, okay? Just, uh, you can sign the link in there. I'm sure my wonderful assistant, Nastia, will put up a link to you uh, there for you to be able to sort of get on board and uh, join it. But as I said, lots more uh, kind of uh, uh, a sort of time-sensitive content that you might be uh, able to uh, make use of. So uh, she's put it there in the chat box. Thank you as always. Uh, so you can click on and link and follow us there. So what are we going to talk about today? I'm going to talk about candlesticks and in particular, what is a pin bar rejection candle? Some of you might know it by different names. Some of you might uh, not know what it is at all if you're completely new to the trading journey. That's absolutely uh, fine. I'll talk about where do they show up on charts, okay? What is it? <clears throat> Hello there, everybody. Apologies for that. Up here, I just had a little bit of a uh, an internet spike or surge there, which just took me out of the room. Then I apologise. I uh, hope you can all uh, hear me. Hope you can all still uh, see me there. Okay, there you go. A little bit of a uh, technology uh, uh, splurge there. Okay, for a Friday afternoon. My apologies, but I said as I hope you're. Uh, um, you can all still hear me. You can all see me back in the room. Thanks very much. Great to, to let uh, that you can let me know there. So uh, why don't we uh, bring these slides up, okay, and uh, and uh, crack on, okay? So, uh, um, so yeah. So uh, before uh, I was rudely interrupted by that internet outage there. Uh, you know, myself. My name's Paul. I've traded for many years. All right. Um, I've traded for hedge funds. I've traded for high net worth clients. Primarily, I look to focus on trading FX indices and commodities. I tend to be a trend trader for my longer term trading and a reversal trader for my short term intraday trading, some of which will you know, come through in today's session. So uh, as I said, today we're talking about you know, part seven of trading strategies for beginners. I'm just gonna look at candlesticks. And in particular, in particular, we're gonna look at uh, a rejection candle, all right? Uh, as the slide says there, rejection candles are a powerful candlestick signal. Uh, they are deemed rejections when a candle forms a wick, which we'll look at in a moment. Wick rejections are formed by an extreme shift in trader bias and sentiment. And that is the thing that, you know, needs to be sort of taken on board. That's the thing that you can uh, learn from and touch with. And we attribute that wick with volatility and a higher probability of a move in the opposite direction. Uh, and today we'll look at the most popular of that which is what I would call a pin bar, right? Uh, and as we'll go on to the next slide or two, you'll see some people can uh, measure it or label it in different ways. Um, as I said, I'm not entirely, I'm not entirely worried how you particularly label it. What I am interested in is that you can understand it, you can recognize it, you can see how it's formed, you can see where it's formed, and you can most importantly, see how could I use this in my own trading? That's the, uh, that's the key things that I want you to be able to, to, to take away. Let's bring up the old drawing tool here. 
So, um, you know, as I'm saying here, it's the, uh, it's, you know, it is a very powerful candlestick signal. However, however, I would say not only is it a powerful candlestick, signal, but it's a very popular one. Uh, and actually what I have found from my own trading experiences is the, you know, pin bars will print an awful lot on the charts. And what happens is what actually is the most important thing is, is actually where they print. Okay. And then what they're, uh, what they're intimating, what they're kind of, uh, what message they are telling you. As I often say to all traders, the, the market is always communicating with you. It's always communicating with you. It's your job to learn how to get in flow with that communication, to be able to read what the market is, uh, is telling you. And with that in mind, okay, what that's what I'll be sharing today about, you know, how pin bars appear a great deal, but it is actually about where and how that they, uh, that they show up that actually could be useful to you as a, uh, as a trader. So <clears throat> what I said is, you know, it's, it's the rejections here, okay? It's the wick. It's the wick that's rejecting because what we're expecting is we're expecting price to have, you know, I don't know, worked its way up. And then price during that period, and in it, that could be a pin bar on a daily chart, could be a pin bar on a one minute chart, could be a pin bar on a four hour chart, on a monthly chart. Okay. Doesn't actually really matter too much about the time frame, but what, you're, what we've expected is that as during that session, for whatever reason, price has rallied all the way up. And then, you know, in this particular case, the bears have stepped in and they have sold off and they've sold off so strongly. That it's actually gone down and closed beyond its open price. There has been, you know, a real, as it says, an extreme shift in trader bias and its sentiment. And we know that there's a higher probability that in the longer term, price over the next few sessions is likely to drift down. And that is useful information to us. But even more useful when we see it happen and appear at certain parts on the uh, on the actual chart. So, as I said, it would be interesting to know how many of you here would know what a pin bar is, how many of you would actually sort of understand it, how many of them would actually utilize it in your own trading already. Be interesting to know, be sort of kind of uh, useful to sort of get your own experiences, because I think it's always great for everybody to be able to share their own particular um, experiences as they go through their own trading journey. So, as I said, uh, the pin bar, it's a very popular trading trigger. Lots of people use it for a trading trigger. You will often hear it called, you know, as I said, quite a few different things. And as I said, I'm not, I'm not drastically, I'm not drastically attached to how you might label it. A lot of people like myself will call it a pin bar. Some people will call it a high test or a low test. Some people will call it, a, you know, a rejection candle. Other people will call it like as a Japanese candlestick name, namely a hammer or a shooting star. As I said, I'm not entirely worried about how you label it. It's more important that you understand what it is what it's implying okay and actually how you can utilize it all right that's that's what i would want you to be able to take away from today's uh, particular session and that's what's really important so uh peter says yes i like pin bars and use them a lot that's fabulous thank you for that peter yeah yana says yep yeah, i use them a lot as well that's great that's great to, to hear and if there's other people if you've had experience of how to use them put it in the chat box it always helps okay it's great to be able to see you know what people's uh, own experiences have been but a good pin bar, and I'm going to label them pin bars myself for, for the rest of this session. What it should have is quite a few sort of simple traits. What we should have is that the open and close of the candle, okay, the open and close of the candle should be within the range of the previous bar, okay, should be within the range of the previous bar. And I'll show you that when we look at some candles on the uh, on the live charts. The wick, okay, ideally the wick should be two to three times the length of the body. Uh, and actually I prefer, I prefer for most of them to, for it actually to have a small body. What you should also have is that, you know, you should have that wick, the long nose, okay? And that's one of the reasons why they're called pin bars is it's after the uh, childhood uh, um, folklore character, Pinocchio, you may remember from your childhood, namely, if you remember the story, the Disney story is that when Pinocchio told lies, his nose got longer. And in many ways, a pin bar is lying, okay, about, you know, what it's sort of, uh, what the market is likely to do. Because the nose or the wick is pointing one way, but the probability of the price moving the other way is, is greater, okay. So that's one of, the, one of the reasons why people would call it pin bars. But a good pin bar should stick out and they are very obvious, all right. They should stick out from the other candles and they should be very obvious. And this is something that people forget about candlestick patterns. A candlestick pattern is in itself a reversal pattern 
okay? It is in itself a reversal pattern. So it's important that there is something to reverse. Take that on board. There's something there's something to reverse. These are only really valid at the kind of end of a move, all right, at the end of a trend. When price is going sideways, their validity decreases greatly. So just remember that. Candlesticks in general are a uh, reversal pattern. So you need to have something to reverse. There needs to be either a very long trend or there needs to be a pullback. OK, something that it actually can reverse. So just uh, just remember that. OK, people people sometimes they get uh, they get a little bit excited when you know, they're new traders and they see a pin bar print and they just want to basically trade every pin bar that they see on the chart. But actually you have to remember those kind of couple of little simple golden rules there to help you make the most of them. So uh, the pinball is a very frequent pattern, and you know, and it is it is actually quite a good pattern for new traders to begin with, because it's it's very visual, all right. Uh, and as we know, rightly or wrongly, rightly or wrongly, okay, you know, the vast majority of uh, traders would be males. Males, rightly or wrongly, are quite visually dominated, all right. Okay, you know, I'm not saying that's a good thing or a bad thing, but. Pin bars are quite a visual signal, all right? You know, they stand out. A good one will stand out on a chart. And that is both a good and a bad thing, okay? It's a good thing because it can become a self-fulfilling prophecy, right, when everybody sees it, but also it's a bad thing because it very sticks out like a thumb and so people might trade against it. But what it can be done is it can give you a great indication of supply and demand. And it is clear and easy to see on charts. Uh, and many people will trade them uh, but not all particularly like I would myself. And uh, I'm going to keep it very simple and basic today because it is, after all, a uh, you know just a, a tactic for complete beginners, something that you can take away and utilize in your own trading from tomorrow. All right. But, you know, there are ways and variations on to, to trade pin bars that can actually help you make the most of them. Uh, and we'll talk about them a little bit more as we go through our, uh, our session together. So. Um, uh, and this is my view. Okay, these these are my trading beliefs, and uh, I'm a believer in what the uh, the great uh, uh, late American trader coach uh, Van Tharp said: is that you know, we don't trade markets, we trade our beliefs about markets. Uh, and the longer I have traded, uh, the more I have come to realise that that is actually quite an astute way to uh, an astute way to look at trading and markets. Uh, and what I see, okay, and as I said, these are my views: is that in markets. I see the wicks on rejection candles, those tails, I see as them as one of the things is most likely indication of where some of the biggest predators are lurking in the market. OK, and uh, you know, what I think is that they show rejection of a particular area or direction. And generally, as a private trader, it's pointless to try and fight them. All right? Don't try to fight them. Instead, work with them to show the likely short-term di uh, direction. So, you know, I've got here, this is an old gold chart here, an old gold weekly chart, and, you know, the price was, you can see price was swinging all the way over there, wasn't it, okay? Uh, before it comes down to this was, which was the uh, 200 period, uh, 200 period moving average here, and actually what happened was, you know, there was sort of kind of one, two, three, you might even say four rejection candles there, all off the 200 period moving average. Lots of uh, wicks pointing down there, okay? As I, as I always say every week, excuse my uh, drawings, I'm a better trader than I am an artist, but hopefully you get the gist there. Let me clear that off, okay? Just make it a little bit clearer there as we go deeper into it, is that, you know, when we're seeing all of these wicks, remember, it's like Pinocchio, where the nose is pointing, okay, is, is kind of almost lying because the likelihood is that the, the, the price action is more likely to go in the other direction. And that's why I said, you know, because if you think about it here, what has happened there is that you know price was in a downtrend here, price in a you know a significant downtrend, uh, and then basically for whatever reason, because maybe it's the two hundred period moving average, because maybe it was like a recent uh, a period of uh, um, a real level of support or an area of supply, for whatever reason, bulls stepped in, okay, and started buying up there, okay, you know they're sort of the biggest, the the biggest predators were there taking a bite out of that uh, out of that kind of short move. Uh, and then invariably what we're expecting is the likelihood is, is that, you know, the higher probability is that price will sort of move in a, in a northerly upwards bullish direction from there. So, you know, that's, that's what I'm looking for. And, and I think the important thing is, as a private trader, 
you know, there are ways and means, but as a private trader, it's usually pointless to try and fight them. That's what I would say, you know, work with them, right? Don't fight the market, okay? You're very welcome to fight the market if you want, ladies and gentlemen, but the likelihood is you probably lose, all right? So don't, all right? You know, just uh, um, what we want to do is want to learn to surf the waves, not sort of, you know, get ourselves crashed on the uh, crashed on the rock, so to, uh, so to speak. So, um, if we want to look at a pin bar, remember what I was saying just a couple of slides ago. A good pin bar, all right, here we go, we'll get the drawing to it. a good pin bar should have the open and the close within the range of the previous bar, which in this particular case, it has, okay, it's within the body, which is even better. The candle wick should be two to three times the length of the body, which is, is certainly is in that case. There's a long nose protruding from all the other bars, OK, and the better powers will stick out and are very obvious. Uh, and what we can see in that particular example over there was that, you know, price was in a pullback. Back to a moving average printed this really quite very clear, a great bullish reversal pin bar, which then became actually a morning star formation uh, before price rallied its way strongly up there. OK, so good ones, as I said, will leap off the chart at you, you know, and remember what I said earlier. There are reversal patterns. So there has to be something for it to reverse. In this case, the very nice, very clear pullback. That's what we're looking for. That's what we're looking to, to, to work with. So here's some example of some bullish pin bars. So let's, for example, say I'm just going to draw it up here. So, you know, the price has been, you know, in a downtrend. Maybe it's in a downtrend. Maybe it's in a pullback in an uptrend. But there is a there is a significant move down. And what we can see here is that, you know, certainly in these first three, they might be very clear to you in terms of, you know, how they look uh, in terms of what they uh, what they are in terms of their, uh, you know, a good, strong pin bars. This one here, this might sort of confuse people a little bit. OK, uh, I would happily sort of trade that. I would consider that a, you know, a good rejection candle, because if prices come down, if we think about it, prices open here during the session, price has kind of you know, collapsed, it's fallen down. Then for whatever reason. The bulls have stepped in, they've taken price and they've bought it and they've bought so much, it's pushed it back, it's open, it's pushed it all the way up, okay? And basically it's closed right on its highs. So it wouldn't necessarily be a, uh, what we'd call maybe, you know, a typical pin bar, but it's very much a rejection candle, all right? When you see this, you know, at the end of a bit of a pullback or a downtrend, you know, and it is very, very bullish. Whereas this one here, the next to it, if you think about it, price has, let's clear these away, price has opened here, Price has fallen down during the session, but actually it's only been able to, the bulls only been able to push it back up halfway up, all right, back halfway up the candle. Does that really give you a sense that the, the bulls have wrestled control of the market? Does that really sort of fill you with confidence that there's been an extreme shift in trader sentiment and bias? I, I would suggest not, okay? So for that one, that is not, you know, when you see that, okay, at the end of a downtrend, you can give that a miss, okay? I wouldn't be uh, wouldn't be getting too excited about that. Uh, and on the flip side, you know, if we've had, if we've been having, you know, maybe, a, you know, a strong uptrend, or maybe this is a, uh, you know, it's a, it's a pullback, right? It's a rally in a, uh, in a downtrend. And then we actually see something like one of these first three pin bars, all right? You know, where we've got the, uh, the, the body is small and it's within the range of the previous candle. The wick is good two to three times the size of the, uh, the candle. It stands out, it's very obvious. You know, those are all bearish pin bars, okay? We'd be expecting to sort of trade. The probability would be that we're expecting trade to move down. And, you know, and I'd also accept this candle here as a rejection candle, because if you think about it, price opened up here, Price pushed up during the session, but then was taken over. The bear, the bull bears took control and basically started selling strongly, sold all the way down, and it closed right on its lows. Right? Think about it. Has there been a really strong shift in trader sentiment? You know, and I would suggest yes, yes, there has been there. Okay, the, the bears are definitely in control, and we would expect price to move downwards from there. On the flip side, from here, if you know price has opened here, price has pushed all the way up. And it's come back, but it's only got to close halfway down that candle. Is that really a very good bearish example? OK, not for a pin bar, not really even bearish sort of rejection. OK, it's still, you know, closed bullish. It's not really giving the intimation that we've had a real extreme shift in trader sentiment. You know, there's a shift in the bias. So, you know, when we'd see that, I'd be giving that a miss. So, um. There are many ways to trade pinballs. 
Lots of people try to trade hammers or shooting stars, those you know, names for them, uh, at the end of a trend, okay, to, to name particular tops. Um, and I, I don't think there's anything particularly wrong with that, but I personally, okay, and I said I'd share my own personal experiences that I personally believe that, you know, certainly for new traders, safest way to trade pin bars is to possibly to trade them within, okay, an already identified trend that is on a pullback off a support resistance level. Maybe that is a static support resistance level, like a horizontal level or support resistance. Maybe it's a, a, a dynamic one, like in this case, on moving averages, or maybe it's off like a trend line or a big round number. But, you know, what I'd be suggesting is that, you know, if we could just see this, probably the price has been coming down, price pulls back, and then we're looking for something for it to reverse. And what we have there is a real bearish pin bar there at the end of a pullback off the 20 period moving average. To me, that's the trade. OK, that is the best way to utilize pin bars in a trade. I'm not saying you can't use this lies to, to pick tops and bottoms. But personally, personally, I, I think trying to pick exact tops and bottoms in markets is a bit of a is a bit of a fool's errand, as we would say here in the UK, a bit of a mugs game. All right. I'm not saying you can't do it. I'm not saying you shouldn't do it but it wouldn't be the way I would choose to engage. I much prefer to use pin bars like this, okay, as, as part of a um, part of a, you know, a pullback in a trend, you know, at the end of the pullback, providing me a pin bar, give me an indication of, you know, where that the dominant trend is about ready to re-exert itself, and that is when I'll be looking to, to get on board. And there are ways and means to do that, there are, but today, just, you know, it's a very simple sort of, you know, intro for traders. This is, this is, way, this is what we'll be looking at. So, so, of course, if you've identified one, you want to know, well, actually, how do I enter, Paul? You know, what, how, do I, how do I get on board a, uh, a pin bar? Well, um, there are several ways, okay? And some of those are, are based upon your experience and your risk profile. But today is all about, you know, tactics for beginners. Safest way, all right, is once you've identified one, it is to buy the break of the high of the candle if it's a, if it's a long trade, all right? or you'll be selling the break of the low, okay, on a short trade. The important thing is, is that, you know, you have your entry here, and, you know, you can see here price has been in an uptrend, clearly it's been an uptrend, it's pulled back here, hopefully you see it pulled back to this 20 period moving average, the blue moving average on this chart, and we have printed a, you know, a very nice pin bar, haven't we? So what we'll be looking to do is, you know, we'll be looking to have an order in, okay, an order in just above the high of that candle. So, you know, I normally say, goes on along, I normally say sort of, you know, uh, I normally would say sort of, you know, two to five pips above the high of the candle, depending upon the, the time frame that you're, you're trading. Uh, and also you might want to just take into account the particular spreads based upon what it is you're actually trading. The important thing is, of course, is that you have a stop loss, the stop loss, Okay, is below the low of the candle. And once again, that can be between about two to five pips, all right? But in trading parlance, as they always say, don't be a dick for a tick, okay? You know, if your stop loss needs to go a little bit further because to go the other side of a big round number or a level of support, et cetera, then do that. But there you have, you know, already you now have, you know where your entry is and you know where your stop loss is, okay? So you know where, you know, two of the three elements, okay? I know where I'm getting in. I know where I'm getting out if I'm wrong, because actually, you know, what could happen is the price could trigger, it could trigger you in, and then for whatever reason, the price decides to actually continue lower, in which case your idea is no longer valid. And if the idea is no longer valid, why would you want to be in that trade? All right. Your job is to take small losses as a trader. And it's a very identified, simply identified stop loss, which would go beneath, okay, the low of that candle. And then what I normally suggest is that, you know, is that really, you know, look for about a one and a half reward to risk, two, okay, one and a half, at, at least the minimum of one and a half up towards two, and sometimes even longer, depending upon how you particularly like to trade. I know some traders like to sort of like to trail their stops, and by all means, you can trail your stops, okay, on swing points, on fractals, all right, on uh, using uh, an indicator like PSAR, if that's what your particular uh, um, uh, style of trading is. But if you're if you're if you're like me who likes to have a target, what I'd be saying is to begin with, okay, just to begin with, look at sort of setting a one and a half reward to risk, okay, for your uh, for your target, just to get you into the into the groove, okay, of being able to identify the trade, put the trade on, put the stop loss on, put the target on, okay, and let the trade play its way out. 
as you develop a bit of experience, as you develop a sample size, 20, 50, 100 trades under your belt, well, then what will happen is you'll probably amend a little bit based upon your own particular trading beliefs, which is what I commented on earlier. But at the moment, to begin with, once you've identified that pin bar, right, and remember what I was saying is the safest way to trade it is as a pullback, okay, at the end of a pullback in an existing trend, that is the way to get on board by the break of the high of the candle with your stop loss beneath the low of that candle. That means that you're in a good place. It allows you also, gives you the details to do proper position sizing as well. So in terms of, you know, looking at a pin bar itself, remember what I was saying is that pin bars are kind of the likely indicators of where the biggest predators are lurking. They show rejection of a particular area or direction. As a private trader, it's kind of pointless to try and fight them. Don't fight them, ladies and gentlemen. Work with them, all right? Work with them to show the likely short-term direction and ideally look to trade with the trend, okay? Don't fight it. Use them as an opportunity to get into the trend, all right, On you know, uh, as, they, as they are the sign at the end of a pullback, giving you an opportunity to sort of, you know, get ready to surf the next wave, which will you know, give you the best chance of achieving that, let's say that one and a half reward to risk. But actually what you'll find is with experience is that you'll be able to sort of stretch that out to two, three, maybe even four, that's that in itself. So that was like looking at, at Pinball, but before I go to the chart, I thought we'd just do a few slides on, well, actually, how do you, how do you turn that into a true price action trading plan? So, you know, I, I thought that would be useful. It'd be helpful to take away. So if we're looking at price action itself, okay, it is a form of technical analysis. However, most of it is in the form of the change in price action, which is exactly what a pin bar can help you with. We don't actually really need the, you know, the sort of the use of, let's say, you know, indicators in the form of oscillators, et cetera. So it can be a form of, of technical analysis. And price action traders are solely concerned with the data that market generates about itself. What it also does is price gives you a good insight into psychology of the market. So, you know, there will be people who will just literally trade a clean chart using pin bars. I personally like to sort of add one or two elements in, as I've talked about a little bit before, which we'll show here and now as we go through the session. But I wanted to traders to be able to just have form a very simple little trading plan that they could take away and start to work on this weekend so that they could utilize next week in their own trading. So, you know, generally what I, I normally suggest to traders is that, you know, less is more and that actually, you know, you want as clean a chart as you possibly can. Some people will literally just trade candlesticks. And um, I have a couple of things on my charts, which I'll show with, show and share with you in a minute. But generally, as a rule, you know, I say less is more and, and actually utilizing lots of oscillators and lots of other indicators it's not always necessary okay when it comes to uh, uh, trading especially using like a price action candlestick as a trigger so the important thing is and i kind of alluded to this before is that we want to identify the levels that we believe price price will react at to provide opportunity so price levels like support and resistance big round numbers and also at the start of the monthly, the weekly, and the daily charts, which some people will use. But as I was saying earlier, my own preferred way to utilize you know, pin bars is at the end of a pullback, okay, in a longer term trend. That I believe is the best way to utilize them. And we'll have a little look at how, you know, on charts where you can see them as they, you know, they are the end of trends. But uh, as I said, I uh, trying to pick the exact tops and bottoms is not my preferred way to trade. I'm sure there'll be other people here who would, who love trying to pick exact tops and bottoms. That's not necessarily my particular uh, preferred way to uh, to trade. I, I normally like to let the market play its hand. Let me show it what let me show it, let it show me what it wants to do, uh, and then I'll make a decision if I want to surf that or if I want to kind of try and ride that wave, which is what I'm really sort of trying to do when I'm possible. So, you know, if you are going to utilize a little bit of price action candlesticks, you do need some price action triggers, you know, and we will cover them again in other sessions, but inside bars and dolphin candles, and most importantly, a pin bar, which is what we're focusing on today. Uh, as always, and you've probably heard me say this many a time, okay, whenever I've talked about, you know, engaging in markets, regardless of whether you're trading one minute charts or monthly charts, you should have a very, very little simple plan that you can follow, okay? You know, that's actually what will help you more than anything. 
So whenever you open a chart, identify the significant levels off the monthly, the weekly, and the daily charts. Then wait to see, you know, you get a price action trigger at those such levels, things like, you know, a pin bar. Remember what I was saying, enter on a trade on the break of the candle. That's, in, that's important. Stop loss at the other side of the candle. No more than 1% of your capital to be risked on a, a single trade. And as I said, target around about one and a half to one or two to one reward, uh, reward to risk or perhaps the next significant level. And as always, as you'll hear me say, record your trades, review them, and repeat the good ones. All right, that is actually how you—that is actually how you build a little trading business. You record your good trades. Well, you record all your trades. You review all of your trades. But what you look to do is to repeat your good trades. All right, you to find those particular areas which become your edge. Um, so you know, I've just got a few very different examples here. You know, and we're going to look at—we're um, going to look at some different ones on the live markets in a few minutes. But, you know, this was an old chart from Gold Weekly. And, and the reason I wanted to show it is because, as I said, you know, you can see there's been a big swing, a big move up here. And then we have it's finished by a pin bar. All right. It's finished by a bearish pin bar there. And you can see for yourself that actually price moved down for, you know, quite happily for the next few weeks. And as I said, you know, what we saw there is that that happened. The reason I was happy with that one is because you can see it happened at a big round number. OK, big round number, big significant level of resistance uh, and actually once price came down here as we can see okay price actually sort of it ended here and we basically printed there we go so just a good strong pin bar here there a good bullish pin bar in fact a couple of bullish pin bars there but what we saw that what was important is that actually happened there at a previous level of support which price has rejected and it's also, as you can see, $1,200, big round number before price basically ran its way up, finished with an engulfing candle before it came down. And then it printed another pin bar here. But remember what I was saying? OK, yes, it was at the 1300, but we're kind of in the middle of the range there. Oh, we remember what I was saying is that, you know, candlesticks are by their very nature a reversal pattern. So there needs to be something for it to reverse. And so you can see there between $1,200 and $1,400 prices in a range. Well, that is one way of using price action candlesticks, as I said, at the end of a range. OK, it wouldn't necessarily be my preferred way right, to try and pick exact tops and bottoms. But sometimes it is very, very clear when you've got that confluence of events. When there's two to three to four things coming together at one time and place, that is what can actually that is what can actually help you there. Um, you know, and as I said, this is probably more likely how I particularly personally prefer to use is that, you know, this is just a, a cable daily pound against the US dollar. And you can see that price is in a bit of a downtrend, you know, and it, and it finishes there. OK, there's a there's a bullish pin bar there. And what happens is price kind of rallies its way back up and it actually it puts in a couple of pin bars there, right, which it washes out. But then it prints another one here before price drops down again, okay? price makes its move. And there's a nice, probably a nice one and a half to two reward to risk there before price pulls back again. And what did we see? It puts in a couple of pin bars, all right? Puts in a few pin bars before price actually sort of moves down. You can see the price is, is moving its way down. And then what happens is it hits this 120 level, a big round number. And what does it do? It prints, you know, a big bullish pin bar there, which becomes a, uh, uh, a moving start, which is at a morning start, which is actually a short squeeze, which is something we covered in the last trading spotlight webinar, which you should hopefully be able to find on the uh, Admiral's YouTube channel. But remember what I was saying is that actually, you know, identifying a trend and then using pin bars at the end of pullbacks, okay, at the end of pullbacks in an existing trend, that is my preferred way to utilize pin bars for trading, all right? You know, while sometimes it's very, very clear, in this particular case, it was at a big round number, but that was the bottom. It's not always, okay? It's not always. And so I said, I prefer to use pin bars as a way to sort of join an existing trend. That is what I find much more, uh, that's what I find much more useful to myself. Uh, and this is the dollar Swiss against the, uh, the, well, the dollar against the Swiss on the monthly chart. Uh, and the reason I put this in is because, you know, what we have here is, you know, actually really, you know, it, what we're looking at is here for, for what was really effective about six, seven, eight years is that even though there was pin bars, 
price was pretty much okay in a bit of a sideways range there okay from you're looking there from 2014 through to 2020 you know you had there you know a good six years or so of uh, price moving and i know there was quite a few pin bars all right so you can see there was a few there okay that gave the opportunities a lot of them were in the uh, a lot of them were in the middle of the range all right a lot of them were in the middle of the range remember what i'm saying okay but, you know, pin bars or candlesticks in general are reversal patterns, so they need to have something to reverse. I like to see them. You know, I'm interested if it's going to happen at where it happens at the uh, at the particular edges, more so just in the middle, all right? Just more so than in the middle of the price. That just doesn't really interest me uh, at all. So, uh, before we switch across the live charts, you know, just a few conclusions. Rejection candles are a powerful candlestick signal. Uh, and they are deemed rejections when a candle forms a wick. Wick rejections are formed by an extreme shift in trader bias and sentiment. And we attribute that wick with volatility and a higher probability of a move in the opposite direction. We prefer to focus on trading as part of a pullback in a trend. And we can add them to our price action trading plans, right? Doesn't really require any use of any other, let's say, additional indicators, although you will find that I, as you can see from my charts, I have a couple of simple moving averages on there. It is, you know, a form of technical analysis, just being able to trade price action. It allows you to trade off clean charts or cleaner charts. At, you know, you can look for price action pin bar triggers at significant levels. And it allows you to build up a simple price action trading, uh, uh, trading plan. So uh, Vincenzo says, I have to go early. Thanks for a good webinar. Bye and happy weekend. Great to see you, Vincenzo. Okay, uh, super to have you them and uh, look forward to seeing you at one in the future. So uh, as always, ladies and gentlemen, if you want to get in touch with Admirals, you can get in touch with them here. Okay, you've got the website there or you have the email address global at Admiral Markets Global. You'll also see that, you know, this video and our others, they're on both the uh, Admirals Global YouTube channel and also the Facebook page there. So be sure to check them out. So uh, I hope you found that useful. We've got a few minutes left, okay? So I'm just gonna switch across the charts and just have a look at a few opportunities that showed up today, just to, you know, uh, just to sort of see how they played out, okay? And so you can get a bit of an idea of how I look to utilize them in my own trading. So if you just bear with me a moment, we'll switch across to the charts. Okay. Mm -mm -mm. Excellent. So I'm hoping that you can still see me. I'm hoping that you can uh, hear me still. Uh, this is the Admiral's uh, MT4 platform. It's on my British Pound uh, profile here. Uh, I think I had a look at gold earlier today. OK, we had trades. So let's bring this up. Yep. So this is like a 30 minute chart here on uh, gold from uh, uh, earlier today. That's the earliest session here. Um, hopefully you can see that, that the price is already in a downtrend. OK, the moving averages are supporting that. And what we actually had earlier in the session in the earlier European session was price had a little bit of a pullback up to the 50 period moving average where it printed a pin bar rejection candle. Right. It was rejecting okay, the sort of the, the pullback before price moved its way down before into those American CPI numbers there before. So, you know, there's, uh, as I said, you know, my preference is to find a trend and to utilize it at the end of a pullback, okay? That's what I particularly like to, to, to see and how it, uh, I prefer it to operate my uh, uh, operate myself. So that was gold. Um, I think there was a couple of others. I think uh, if I remember FTSE this morning, actually had something on it uh, or yesterday's and stuff. We had a bit on the, uh, yeah, so yeah, yesterday's actually. So um, let's see if I can zoom in a bit here um, because there was quite a few. What we had here, I'm going to zoom in. So this is the 30 minute chart on the FTSE as well. Uh, and what we were is hopefully you can see that, you know, we were already in a downtrend. You know, the, the 20 is beneath the 50, which is beneath the 200. It's in a nice kind of move. Uh, and then what we had yesterday was at the start of the session, we had a little bit of a pullback, which ended with a pin bar. And price did move down initially, but it hadn't pulled back enough yet. And price actually retraced all the way back up to this, the 50 period moving average. Remember what I was saying is that I like to see particular bounces all right, off uh, moving average 20, 50, 200. That gives me the pin bar. And actually what we got here was not one, but we got, you got one, you got two, you got three, three rejection candles, three pin bars there showing you that, you know, it just wasn't going any further. And if it can't go any higher, where's it going to go? It's going to go lower. And so we ran into the American session at the end of the day 
by actually sort of you know, moving its way down there, okay? And that was just a way of just basically utilizing a pin bar at the end of a pullback in an existing trend as a way and a means to get on board and to surf with the uh, existing uh, surf with the existing trend, okay? Not looking to not looking to fight the pin bar or the trend, just look to sort of work uh, with it. And we had earlier in the week uh, pound against uh, yen here, okay? Uh, earlier in the week, what we can see here is we're in a very clear trend, okay? Very clear trend. Price is up and it started here. Price had pulled back to the twenty and put in a rejection candle, and then basically you can see it's very strong. And every time it pulled back to the moving average. There was a little pin bar there, moves up again, comes back, prints another bullish pin bar, moves up, comes back, prints two bullish pin bars, pings up, comes back, prints another bullish pin bar, and until it continues, until until it ends, okay? And this is the, the grey box is the overnight Asian session, comes down into here, and then it pulls back here and it puts in another pin bar here, which you might think is, but actually it, although it goes down a few pips, once again, it needed to pull back more before it actually collapsed its way down. And that sometimes happened. No, no, um, no trading tactic is perfect. You know, no trading tactic works 100% of the time. But when you have a very good, clear, strong trend, you don't want to be fighting it. We said, you know, when we get pin bars that are pullbacks or part of pullbacks, that in itself can be a useful way, all right, to get on board and to ride and to run with that uh, particular trend. And I've just shown you 30 minute charts here from, you know, some of my own uh, intraday trading there. So there you go, ladies and gentlemen. Unfortunately, we've run out of time there as always, but uh, you know, I always try and fit in as much as I can, try and share with you as much as I possibly can with you. Uh, I hope you found that useful. I hope that's given you just a little bit of insight into A, what a pin bar is, B, what's the best way to utilize it, what's the best way I believe to, to, to utilize it, and how you can use it. It's just part of a very simple price action trading plan to help you just you know, have a, a simple tactic that, you know, that a beginner can take away and start to utilize in their, uh, in their own trading. Uh, as always, you know, I, uh, I wish you the very best of success in your own trading, ladies and gentlemen, and I look forward to speaking to you soon. Have a great trading week. Take care.